Hello, I'm Nathan from Serious Geeks, and today we're going to have a review of the rules for the Ophidian Destroyers. A quick caveat is that we don't actually know the full picture, we don't know the points values, we don't know what stratagem support they'll get, we don't know if some characters give them bonuses. As such, this review is going to be based on the data sheet that we do have revealed by the Warhammer community team, and we'll try and marry this with the information we do know from certain character data sheets, etc., from the Indomitus box set. Of course, the current Codex Necrons could also provide the odd bonus to this unit, but again, we don't know how that will change going forward. So, taking a look at the stat line of this unit, we can see that it's actually a fairly weak version of the Destroyers, although it still has a hefty stat line for most models in the game. Its toughness of 4 is not particularly overwhelming, but it does have 3 wounds, which does make a little bit of a difference when it comes to losing models. The biggest flaw in this unit's defence is the 4 plus armour save. It is distinctly average and it won't hold up to much scrutiny from the opponent. So, why might we take this unit over Scorpec Destroyers, apart from potentially points values being a lot cheaper? Well, this unit does have a special rule that could be useful. During the reinforcement step in your movement phase, you're able to use tunnelling horrors of this unit to be able to deploy anywhere on the tabletop as long as it's more than 9 inches away from enemy models. So, using this ability, this unit can put pressure on opponents by attacking enemy objectives that might be away from the main fight, they might be towards the enemy's back line. You can also attack supporting units a lot easier by putting pressure on them and actually putting this unit close by. The biggest flaw with this ability is the fact that it takes this unit away from your supporting characters, which can be a problem, but then you are using this unit for a specific role, so you should factor that into your army selection. It does have hardwired hatred like most destroyer units, in fact I believe all of them have it so far, so we know that this unit can get rerolls away from character support. This gives them a little bit of autonomy, which is very useful because they do have some decent weaponry, which combined with the fact that they have a native minus one modifier to hit in close combat, means that opponents will not be able to deal with these relatively easily with basic troopers. They probably will need some dedicated assault force or a large number of units or models to be able to deal with them. This factors into their role of ranging ahead and causing havoc, which could be a very useful role in an army that might take other destroyer units that you want to distract the opponent from destroying. Scorpec destroyers are quite swift, but they don't have this sort of deployment shenanigans, so they will have to advance on the opponent from your own deployment zone. That means that the opponent is going to get a chance to try and deal with them. If you have Locust Destroyers in your army as heavy support, the opponent is going to want to deal with those to stop them destroying his tanks or his heavy units. As such, this unit can provide a real distraction, and that could be worth quite a lot. The final stat that is worth talking about on their data sheet is the movement of 10. 10 inches is a decent speed, and it means that you'll be able to keep up with most other units in the army, and you'll be able to get back into the fight no matter where you place them on the table. It's even possible to use Tunnel in Horrors to put them elsewhere on the table that's quite far from your own army, and yet still bring them in to support other units at a later date. This would mean that the opponent can rarely ignore this unit. They cannot leave them for long because they'll always be back in the fight no matter where they are on the battlefield. A final word on the stratagem support this unit can have. If you look at Codex Necrons, it refers to extermination protocols affecting destroyers. Now this unit doesn't have the destroyer keyword, it has the destroyer cult keyword. So we can imagine that that is going to be relevant in the new Codex, which is when this unit will be released. So we can rest assured that they will be able to utilize certain stratagems going forward. At the moment, no they can't, but we don't have the unit in our hand, so it doesn't matter. As you can probably expect, Ophidian Destroyers will have an amplification to their danger levels to the opponent with the application of stratagems and character support. But if you're taking other destroy units, I imagine they will get the benefit of those stratagems and characters simply because of where they're placed on the tabletop and how offensive those units can be. As an example, extermination protocols, if unchanged, will be ideal on Locust Destroyers. Any close combat benefits will be better off used on things like Scorpec Destroyers. Also, because of the nature of deployment, you'll probably be utilising character support for your Scorpec Destroyers, your Locust Destroyers, and potentially other things as well. So I can't see the Ophidian Destroyers getting much of a bonus from that, but of course they will be more offensive with that support. And you could also raise them from the dead using reanimation protocols, using certain character support. But again, that will probably be on your other units. So it's very 
as and when it's a good tactical strategic t moment to do these things. But going forward, I imagine this will be a standalone unit that operates away from your main force. And I would regard it as such in your strategic planning. Overall, this is going to be a very interesting unit in Necron armies. They're not going to be as dangerous on the front line, such as Scorpec destroyers or other units like Canoptec Wraiths that might be a bit more survivable. Even Lich Guard that are going to be slower, but very dangerous in close combat and can actually have dispersion shields, which are going to be very powerful. So on that basis, they're not going to be a frontline unit, but they could provide options to assault the opponent, particularly one that might be dug in Tower Armies or Astra Militarum quite far away from your main force and you don't want to be under fire to get to them. So this unit can actually help in that regard. As always, it remains to be seen what additional support they get in the Codex. So we can't make a full judgment call on whether they're going to be worthwhile, but they do look stupendous and that is half the battle. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe, try and promote the channel, and I will catch you all soon. Peace out.